hello everyone welcome to my channel in the last video session we have seen how to write our custom map reduce program and we also learned about how to read the data in the csv format into a hadoop cluster and perform map reduce operations on it with the insights that we gained in the previous session we'll uh, move ahead in today's session we are going to explore uh, how we can apply uh, the aggregate functions on the data that has been already stored into our hadoop uh, cluster so what exactly these aggregate functions are so aggregate functions are the operations that you can perform on a cumulative data on a uh, which is uh, segregated using a particular criteria some of the aggregate functions are some average total count etc so one of that uh, uh, kind that is uh, some aggregate function we are going to use it in here okay so there is no predefined uh, function for it we have to write the logic and we are going to code it in our uh, MapReduce programming so what we are going to do now is we are going to make use of that data set that we created in the previous class and uh, we are going to uh, define a problem statement and we are going to write uh, a solution for it using MapReduce framework so here is the data set uh, that we have defined so in the previous session what I did is we have counted how many number of transaction done by each user by looking into the column D which will give you the username. In today's session what we are going to do is we are going to count how much amount was involved with each user in this particular data set. So if we can look into this uh, data set uh, Anil has done more than one transactions. Uh, which involves some amount of money I want to find out the overall uh, sum of all these money per user so that is the problem statement that we are uh, going to address in this session all right so now let us come back to the programming part so as I taught you people uh, the skeleton of the map reduce program uh, is kind of same so we are not going to write everything uh, from the scratch what we are going to do is uh, we are going to make use of the existing code we are going to tweak it a little bit based on our application need and then we will submit that or we will export that as a jar and we will run that uh, using our Hadoop cluster alright so uh, you know for the sake of explanation I am going to create a new project I am going to call this as transaction sum so in this particular uh, project I'm going to create a new package you know that well so create a class inside that finish it so now I'm going to reuse the code that I've already coded for the previous session so I'm going to copy this piece of code so this is uh, this is just to get the skeleton of the map reduce code so a little bit of tweaking here and there we have to do so that I'm going to teach as well so the first thing is we have to copy this transaction class name and replace the sales count with that right and then we have to configure the class as well so get rid of the sales count and replace it with transaction class so name the give the job name as transaction class itself so uh, now you get rid of this uh, skeleton code that is then automatically generated by your uh, uh, ide so what we are supposed to do next is you know what to do first is uh, we need to build, uh, add the hadoop libraries to the build path so go and add uh, the two libraries that is required for us to run the MapReduce code one is common 3.1.3 jar which is nothing but uh, uh, your utility uh, Hadoop utility jar it is the other one is MapReduce jar so we just require client core so add these jars and apply and close and most of the errors will go uh, if everything is written properly so the next thing what we are supposed to do or what I am going to do in this case is I am going to get rid of this mapper code and reducer code uh, because I want to write uh, my own code for this Okay. so since we are dealing with a different application I want to code my mapper and reducer code on my own so I am going to do that so let us start with it so as I taught you people in the previous class or previous session, the 
um, CSV file has been uh, will be read and the offset will be taken as a key and the value the first occurrence of the value will be stored in the value which is of type text and it will this mapper will output the values in the key value pair keys of type text and values of type int writable so we need to get these values remember here uh, what we are supposed to do is the username should be taken as a key and the amount should be taken as a value so we have to convert our code or we have to convert our data in that format only so the incoming values are uh, uh, of type text first of all let us convert it to string so we know the code for this so i'm going to call this as uh, a string uh, value string is equal to value dot to string so this is going to convert the incoming data or incoming values which is uh, with the comma at least of course the entire line will be read and it will be taken or it will be converted into string first now what we are going to do is we are going to split that entire line based on the splitting criteria that is comma so i'm going to create an array for this so i'm going to call it as csv array so this is equal to value string dot split so the splitting criteria is comma so i'm going to do this so we get all the values which are separated by comma into this particular array so if i want to reference the uh, name then i have to look into csv array uh, of three and if i want to reference the amount i will get it uh, in the csv array of two so now we need to generate that value so i'm going to do that so the output type that is amount is of the int writable so I'm going to call this as uh, intritable amount. So uh, we are going. To, I'm just going to define a variable of type intritable. So this is equal to how to get it, how to get the value. So intritable. So this is going to take one argument which is of type int, but the incoming value is of type string, which is of a string array. Now we need to convert it somehow. So we'll use the integer class. Uh, it's in own inbuilt function called as parseInt. For this cause so i'm going to use csv array as an argument and remember the amount we are talking about so we need to reference the second column for this now we need to output the value we need to use the object of type output collector dot collect function to output the values from the mapper to the reducer the first argument is the key itself which is of type text so do this new text so the text is nothing but the username how do i parse it so go to csv array of column number three so this will give you the uh, name and associated with that is the amount value just pass in the amount and your mapper code is ready that's all that is there to it your, uh, with respect to your mapper code now we'll come back to the reducer code so in the reducer code uh, what we get is per key there will be multiple transactions or multiple uh, transaction that is done uh, and we are interested in multiple amount that we are passing in from the mapper so for one key there are more than one value so we'll use the iterator object to pass through it and we'll perform some operation so how to write that code first of all the incoming key i want to copy it and I want to create a string out of this so string key is equal to no I don't require string type because the output is again of type text so I'm going to use that text key is equal to t key so this will be my key value I'm just copying it the next thing is uh, we need to ensure that uh, it doesn't cross the boundary of uh, the values so we'll use the iterator inbuilt function for this so I'll just uh, Prior to that, let me define one more variable. So that is overall count. I'm going to initialize it to zero. So this will give you the. This is a variable which will store the cumulative sum that we are going to obtain out of this. Okay. So now we'll uh, use uh, the hash next function by of the iterator to traverse through the code. While values has more than one value in it, what we are going to do is we are going to create an int writable object. So I'm going to call this as value, int writable value is equal to values dot next. Okay. 
so this will get each of the value and we are going to store it in that uh, variable which is of type int writable now as and when i get that value what i'm supposed to do i'm supposed to add that value to the overall count so we'll use this uh, statement overall count is equal to overall count plus value value dot get okay so this will get it will call the internal constructor of intraitable to get the value and we are going to add that value to the overall count so we got the key and we got the value all that is there to do is we have to write this into the output file so that can be done with the output object output dot collect so the first argument that we need to pass is the key so we'll directly pass in the key that we copied and the second one is the intraitable object so write it as new intraitable and pass this overall count to that okay so there you go uh, your reducer code is also ready so this is all that is there with respect to the programming part the next thing that we are supposed to do in this case is you are supposed to export this particular project as a jar so click on jar click on next so make sure that the class path and the project path is ready I'm going to call this a stickout or jar so click on next next and make sure that you are pointing to the main class so there you go finish this okay now the jar has been generated it is there available in here so what i'm supposed to do now is have to run the hadoop cluster so you know the drill what you're supposed to do uh, go to cd hadoop home slash sbel and then uh, do what start all dot slash start all dot sh so make sure that uh, all the demons are up and running we'll have to wait for 10 seconds to start these demons so let us be patient with respect to that okay so there you go uh, it started the demons name nodes data nodes secondary name node node managers resource managers etc so all the demons are up and running just cross check so all the demons are available with respect to Hadoop. Now we'll come back to the home directory. You know the drill. You need an in, need to create an input directory in the Hadoop home. So that's what we are going to do. And inside that input directory, you have to pass in this data.csv. So that's what I'm going to do now. We'll use the HDFS command. HDFS DFS make directory hyphen p. I'm going to uh, call this as input directory. Okay. Now the next command that I'm going to throw, uh, try is uh, I'm going to put this uh, um, data.csv inside that. So hdfs dfs hyphen put. So I'm just going to traverse through this and remember this is not the Hadoop home that we're talking about. I'm going to pass through this my main account home and desktop and inside that what we have is data.csv so have to put that particular file inside the input directory okay so let's see okay now just let us cross check once whether the file is there or not so i'm going to go and see okay so we have our data.csv present in the input directory all that is there left to do is you have to run the jar by referencing the jar just we created with the input directory and the output directory the command is fairly straightforward hadoop jar so the jar is available in this directory so um, we have to take in the input directory and the output directory if it is there it will uh, give an error if it is not there it will create it and it will run so don't have to create that output directory as well so let us uh, give it a try so the job has been submitted so mapper is at zero percent producer is at zero percent so map is now hundred percent producer is at zero percent okay so now it got through so uh, the mapper and uh, producer code has worked fine so let us check the output in the output directory 
just check the part file so there you go we got the sum the overall sum of all the amount or sum of amount uh, which is transacted by particular user we can use the data.csv to cross check this amount it's kind of same so in this session we were able to uh, uh, come up with a problem statement which will uh, let it, which will make us use the aggregate function to perform inside the Hadoop cluster so thank you